Uh, good morning. My name is Nishit Singh. I'm a power engineer. I've worked roughly 25 years with the multinational suppliers, producing network control and planning functions. And last 15, 16 years, I was working with the Swiss ESO, which became TSO. So I know what are the challenges in digitization. And thank you, Laura, for bringing the topic. I would like to talk about CGM. What are the challenges? Where do we stand today? And what do we plan in future? So if I'll start with the landscape. If you see, uh, we'll get from TSOs uh, individual grid models. That's simply to say that is the network state at one particular time where all uh, line flows, voltages, the network parameters are known. And that gives a network state and a particular time. And that goes through different um, time frames, starting from year ahead up to the intraday. So TSOs prepare the IGMs and send it to uh, over CGM platform to a quality assurance gate. Uh, these models are then aligned. We have pan-European verification function and common grid uh, model alignment, which takes the net positions, the schedules from each region and adjust the uh, makes a pan-European scheduling, which can be used to produce a common grid model for all of Europe. If the quality of the IGMs is bad, it would be rejected and um, sent message would be sent back to TSO. He has a chance to uh, improve the IGM or if in case the time limit has crossed, some substitution methods will be used inside the, uh, the program, inside the um, merge function to take the best guess. And once this common grid model is available, it would be used by all the services which require the network information, be it capacity calculation, uh, coordinated security analysis, outage planning, coordination, or short and medium term adequacy. Most of these functions are known to you through network code, and this is critical uh, function from the program that uh, NSOE provides the platform and uh, TSOs and RSCs connect them, uh, their functions on platform uh, and uh, the landscape uh, as we have defined is a joint responsibility of NSOE. There are 42 TSOs part of this program and five regional security coordinators. Each TSO uh, chooses a regional security coordinator who is responsible or who is coordinating the area security uh, and he gets he, he can make the merge uh, taking the IGMs from your region but the idea is to have a common grid model which covers whole of Europe. So if you see it's a large landscape distributed over multi-users and it's very important that the platform is well functioning, stable and uh, performance uh, performs as it is done. So this picture shows where we are today. If I see the timeline, we had our first release on 1st of August where <clears throat> we have all the central packages we have uh, put in, uh, which includes the um, systems on uh, uh, central software and IGMs can be exchanged over this platform and uh, RSCs can pick up the IGMs, make the common grid model. Uh, what we are doing now is improving the software, we are removing the bugs, we are enhancing the stability of the system, we are testing it again, and we are bringing in some new functionality. So uh, the first milestone has given us a possibility to have a pan-European data exchange capability. We have started working on the physical communication network, the 
uh, four TSOs are connected to the physical communication network, which is at the moment dedicated uh, development for CGM program, and then individual grid models uh, are put in on the platform through the TSOs, which gives the possibility to RSCs to have a common grid model. Uh, <clears throat> since it's a, a large participation, uh, we have uh, done uh, a monitoring possibility of the local implementation projects. So each of the TSOs and RSCs have appointed a CGM manager who looks uh, how the progress is of their deliverables, whether IGMs can be produced in good quality and granularity to fit in in the business process, and then uh, uh, are available to run for the five services which we have. So to give you an uh, idea, this picture looks complex, but this is only one snapshot. It's a representative picture. So if you see the block in the red one is what we uh, deliver from uh, CGM program. If you start uh, with the green one, that's the communication network. As I told you, we have uh, we have plans to have a full rollout of um, uh, network communication network, which is in uh, ownership of NSOE and TSOs, and it is dedicated network for uh, the applications which are running currently. <clears throat> OPD is this application running on this platform. We have two service providers. One is for the uh, data exchange. Uh, software. Other one is for the uh, environment of the data management. So if I see from OPD, we have three three blocks. OPDM, that's the operational planning data management software. ECP is uh, NSOE communication platform. And EDX is the uh, NSOE data exchange module. So this is treated as a as a middleware which we provide to all RSCs and TSOs. They have to install it in their uh, environment. And if you see CPE, that's the customer premises equipment over a secure way, they connect to the IT communication network. And each of the participants, whether it's TSO or RSC has possibility to uh, submit data on this platform uh, and uh, use the common grid model which is again put in by the RSCs for their particular service of particular users. So <clears throat> we, uh, as uh, I had shown you in last slide, ECP, EDX, OPDM are running. We, we have tested them with most of the uh, TSOs. Uh, the communication platform, we are in process of rollout. That's a long-term process. So. We'll be doing it over a period of time. And in the meantime, we'll be bringing all modules and central software uh, in better shape, in quality, and uh, to perform as fit for purpose. So I've used a lot of uh, uh, acronyms. So these are the uh, items which we have talked about in energy communication platform, data exchange, operational data management, uh, OPDE, these are the four items which are under um, the, the middleware. We have completed those. We are improving, we are uh, cleaning the initial bugs. The methodology part has been uh, updated. Uh, the common grid model alignment has is not 100% complete, but we are working on it. The quality assurance services are available. TSOs can see the quality of their IGMs directly on a portal, uh, pan-European verification we are integrating at the moment, and the boundary data management application, we have done it in, uh, in uh, cooperation with the system development committee, and we take a snapshot from that and include it for the um, boundary alignment and where the IGMs are merged. Communication network uh, is running as a separate project with rollout and deployment. Uh, just to show you a, 
about the program, program directorate. Uh, I'm leading that and we have uh, a dedicated PMO for that, a business lead manager, solution delivery manager, and ICT delivery manager with me make the program uh, directorate. And we have very direct line of reporting. I'll show it to you in a minute. The TSOs and RSCs all have one representative, which is responsible. He doesn't have to be a subject matter specialist, but he's responsible for getting the deliveries of the TSOs and RSCs uh, so that we can get the IGMs and produce the common grid model with the software. The green parts are the business parts. So we have from system operation committee, uh, which uh, validate the business requirement and updates. We have methodology manager who sees what are the impacts or which new methodologies are coming and how those methodologies are translated is the job done within the build process manager. So if you see the um, block under the rubber band is business oriented, the blue items are more in the uh, program control and program deliverables. So that's how we take care of both IT as well as the business part in the program. Uh, the governance has been streamlined. So if you see from the bottom level, CGM organization directly reports to Secretary General in a weekly rhythm. Then is a steering group, which is made up of uh, a system operation committee chair and vice chair. Uh, of the NSOE managers of ICT system operations uh, and it's uh, led by Secretary General Lauren Schmidt and that uh, meets in uh, four to five weeks rhythm. Then we uh, the steering group reports to the uh, NSOE board in six weeks or seven weeks rhythm and uh, four times a year the, the information uh, the end status goes to assembly and so you can see uh, even if it's a multidisciplinary multi-committee program we have a streamlined uh, and have given very large responsibility in hands of the program to make sure that the play platform comes in and brings uh, the shows so if uh, if you remember we are talking of the opd that's the operational planning data environment we have the different status here and uh, the green ones uh, are completely connected. The blacks are yet to connect. The orange one are testing and the green ones are connected testing, but in different stage of uh, quality of IGM. So our idea would be that whole of Europe, all of the connected uh, uh, parties which are using, which are part of the CGM program are in dark green in terms of OPD, we are, I think by the time we go to, uh, this slide is three weeks old. Uh, we definitely, um, we are sure we'll get everything green within two, three weeks. So we'll have all TSOs with 100% possibility to connect to OPD and send their IGMs. Uh, on the network side, we have started from the continental Europe. You can see the three uh, TSOs are connected with OPD environment on the physical communication network. And here we would do roll out starting from the score network, uh, extending outwards. And uh, the, the Scandinavian countries are connected through regional private network that shows in light green. Uh, similarly, we might have uh, the CWE regional private network covering the central and west Europe with uh, France, part of Germany, Netherlands, uh, Belgium and UK. So that way we'll have uh, each of MVS parties connected to a secure network which is under control of TSOs, which is stable and which can be extended to provide the performance requirements. This is to give you uh, an overview. This is a, a state from um, August. We, we see we do not want to plan too many releases because each release has to be tested by all the parties. So 
uh, after the August release, we are planning one in the middle of uh, end of this year, middle of December, and that will provide possibilities to TSOs and RSCs to test their software using the platform. Uh, it could be still could be on the internet, RPN or Atom. And slowly, you can see we go up to uh, four or five releases and bringing it, updating all the hardware, uh, the rollout part, uh, and uh, allowing the local implementation projects to catch up. And in parallel, we have some updates of business requirements, uh, which are dependent on network code. So some of the requirements might be coming in, uh, but we are waiting for them to be formed so that we can uh, start developing the hardware and the software as a solution for those activities. So uh, first of August, we reached almost 100%, except for two or three small uh, items, which I mentioned earlier, uh, providing a pan-European data exchange capability. That's what we had promised. We are, uh, I think, two months late in providing that capability, but that capability is available now. And our aim is to make that uh, usable and in a regular use by testing and improving, uh, ironing out the initial problems. So local implementation, as you can see, is a very important part of the whole program. It's responsibility of TSOs and RSCs to do the update on their part. So uh, there is strong engagement between program, CGM program and the manager group. Uh, our service delivery manager uh, is um, having regular meetings, webinars with the CGM managers to see what are the issues, how far they are, uh, running on different streams and we have published an internal report which shows what the state is and we would be repeating this exercise uh, at least two three times a year to make sure that all lips uh, deliver as we had planned and will uh, go online uh, for different business processes so I have told you these are the milestones which we have reached we have integrated multiple data communication channel, uh, internet, VPN, lease lines, and we have validated that by uh, connecting the core TSOs. Uh, we are very actively engaging and monitoring the uh, local implementation projects, governance and project management framework is in place. And uh, different processes and standards have to be harmonized and aligned across multiple TSOs and RSCs, and that's the work which will start once we have a platform where this, this, the processes can be tested and software can be implemented. So coming back to it, uh, as I said, it's a complex program, bringing it a lot of central software, but at the same time having software uh, to produce automated IGMs, for different business processes and RSCs to provide the common grid model. And NSOE is committed to deliver CGM OPD for TSO and RSC business processes, and they will be planned and brought in in, in the given time frame as and when the business process is ready. So from program side, we, our endeavor is to make a stable, secure platform, which can be used any of the current business processes or future business processes, which will require network data exchange between TSOs, RSCs, and this data can be available in a harmonized and standardized way to all the participants. Thank you very much. I, I tried to give you an overview. Uh, there have been some questions coming in. We'll take them. Uh, uh, one by one as a condensed form and most of them would be put on the as a the documentation for webinar to your um, service so floor is open for question now or later when you uh, round up the whole webinar thank you very much